What is good? We're back with another episode, of the FF Dynasty. How you doing, Mr. Wayne? A little tired, but uh, I'll make it through. I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. Just had a baby. I don't care about you. <laughs> just had a baby. I'm back. I'm back. That's that quick, baby. Baby brain, though. Just give me, cut me some slack. Back like cook crack. Ready to roll. All right. So today we got another rookie breakdown for you. We got Isaiah Spiller. Um, and in a stunning revelation, we may have three pretty solid running backs in this class. It's trash class. Who knew? Uh, so we've done Brees so far. We got Spiller here for your pleasure. And Look at this run. You Walker love here on right the next away. one. Oh, yeah. You know on that run right there when he hit that, that second level right here. And he comes through here and just hits this poor man. He said, oh, <laughs> where am I? Took my breath away. <laughs> yeah. uh, but before we get rolling here, be sure to subscribe, like, Comment below what you like, what you didn't like. Uh, maybe if you want to see a video on, on something specific, hit us below. Um, all your subscriptions and comments are welcomed and appreciated. So we got Isaiah Spiller coming in at 6'1", 215. Ding. <laughs> well, I've, I've seen 215. I've seen 220. I've seen 225. Wait, 105. Yeah, so a little bit all over the place, but I'm going with 215 seems to be the most consistent number. Seems like he slimmed down and it, and that it final feels year. Feels good. It feels right. Feels nice. It feels good. Yeah. All right, so he's 20 years old, 8'9". Mm, like nine, that, like that. 8'9", 2001. Um, good birthday, right around mine, so I like that. He's a Leo. Uh, <laughs> ah, look at that. We're bringing signs uh, into the bitch. Boom. Put that in the uh, description. Yeah, sign. Astrology. <laughs> He's from Spring, Texas, uh, Klein Collins High School, four-star recruit, tons of offers, Oklahoma, Bama, Michigan, among others, um, ultimately chooses Texas A&M because it feels like home, uh, kind of his words there, and his father played tight end at A&M um, and had his career short cut short due to an injury. Speaking um, of tight so end at a &M, Sort of in his blood. That A&M tight end is phenomenal, 85. Yeah, a lot of people, mm. flashes on tape a lot. Mm. A lot of people have him as the uh, dynasty tight end one here for fantasy purposes. I can see why. Um, Anyways, off track, back on it. So, yeah, so that's kind of the little bio stuff. Hopping into the metrics here. He's a dominator in the 25th percentile. Let me pull um, it up. Where are the metrics at? Or, there or we go. 25%. That's the 52nd percentile. Excuse me. Get it right. God damn it. Um, yards per carry, 5.5, 55th percentile. I uh, needs to be uh, 6.0. Target share, 8.9, 72nd percentile. All righty then. Now we're talking. Seems pretty decent. Um, had a 5.8, 4.58 coming out of high school. I, um, I think it's verified. And that was, it's verified. <laughs> uh, I got a verified number over here. By me. Um <laughs> Seems so, a lot of chat. Everyone that I've kind of come across has all said kind of a similar manner of maybe probably four or five sounds seems about right. It's proposed a four four nine. It did look like he got faster as the years went on. Possibly, but we'll you know we'll talk about that as we get into the uh, player and opinion tape portion here after we get through some of these stats. Uh, so before we get into all the stats, he might have had a little broken toe action in 2020 for a portion of the season. Not super well documented, but definitely by the end of the bowl game, they were saying, yeah, he definitely had an injury. But when he it started, did look sluggish in some of those um, 2020 games and, and not knowing he had an injury definitely helps compensate for seeing it yeah, not see, quite look as explosive. As I, I would say that 2020, I thought he looked damn near his best. Um but I really I'm, like the 2020 I, I, tape. I feel like the Tennessee game maybe was where he, you know, but he was still doing work even with that injury. That so Florida game that you that. just watched right there, that was 2020. Looked pretty damn good to me. Um, so comes onto the scene as a freshman, gets in there, 13 games, 174 attempts, 946 yards. Um, stays pretty consistent throughout his career. Um, th those are all around thresholds that he that he holds. 10 touchdowns his first year, you know, nine touchdowns, 2020. Six touchdowns, 2021 attempts, 188 in 2020, 179 in 2021, thousand yards in both of those seasons, 5.5, 5.6. So, you know, kind of all right in the same ballpark, uh, pretty much very consistent through college here. Mm. The yards after contact, uh, 
tail off a hair, uh, but the the missed tackles forced really ramp up. So mm-hmm. you know, it gets more comfortable in 2020 and 2021 of of shaking dudes. Uh, so 541 total attempts for Mr. Spiller throughout his career. So I don't know if that's high tread, low tread, the the the, the right amount of tread. You never know. Um, if he doesn't have a bunch of carries, <laughs> then then he didn't have enough work. And if he has too many, then he's overworked. Right. It's just right. you can't please anyone out there no. these days. Everybody's got to be mad about something. So then we get to the receiving part of this. And, and you know, I think most people will be pleasantly, uh, you know, this is good. You he's, look he's, at that. Just he's right in the it. range that, that everybody wants him to be in. 96 total uh, receptions or to- targets, 74 total receptions throughout his career. Um, you know, again, pretty consistent here all throughout 37 targets, 29 receptions, 26 targets, 20 receptions, 33 targets, uh, 25 receptions, reasonable amount of yards afterwards. Nothing crazy. Nothing really over 200 right at 203 his first year. A pretty good receiving back. I would say underutilized in that category. Underutilized? Like Under, he could do underutilized. More. Yeah, okay. I think I think I think there's a strong suit there that could be uh, really built upon. Um all right. But, you know, so they did have Devin A. Chain there coming in this year. Uh, he's a bit of a different build. We had a 6'1", 215 to 225 guy here. You got a 5'8", 185 guy where just a, a great, just a much different athlete, much faster. Just, you know, obviously if he's 5'8", 185, got to be a great athlete, much faster guy, uh, quicker, more elusive. Um, and you would think that maybe he would have been able to take some of that receiving game away, but all, all uh, Spiller did was bat that away and have the most targets and not quite the most receptions, but the most targets he had had or second most targets he had had uh throughout his career so keeps a chain um while while he got on the field he kept him at bay a little bit and this is a you know this is a a high test athlete there he's one one of the better athletes in the country um so the fact that spiller kept him uh at bay i think speaks volumes and the fact that you still had to give spiller his his work and he was still the number one guy and clearly if you watch the tape and and see what's going on he's definitely the engine uh of that offense where a can kind of come in and give you something different spiller is definitely the constant where you know kind of can get better as the game goes on well maybe that can explain for some of these advanced stats not being as high as you would think that they would be based on the film Right. Uh, because, you know, it, it seemed like he had a lot of yards after contact, but only ranked 42nd with 647. Now, these are just for 2021, for those of you listening on the podcast. Uh, average 3.68 yards after contact per attempt. Good for 17th. So, jumping up there a little bit. 56 more missed forced tackles, however you want to say Missed it. tackles forced. That's only good for 18th. You know, it seemed like he was leaving people... Uh, he was breaking people's tackles is what I want but, to say. But also there. because of maybe not some of that higher threshold where the Brees and the Walkers were, didn't get maybe as many chances to uh, force missed tackles. Or Fair, right. And, and then, you know, only 61st in yards and 60th in yak and 11th, uh, 11 missed force tackles on the receiving end tied for 16th. So these aren't spectacular numbers. We definitely saw Brees Hall blow these out of the water. We'll see Kenneth Walker blow these out of the water. These are kind of average-ish stats. I don't think they tell the story. I'd, I'd say some of them are pretty good for the amount of work that he was getting, but they definitely don't, they don't, they're not. Uh, Can't rest your laurels and say, see, see, right, see, right. the stats, the stats. You got to take it to. Which I'm fine with. Right, right. We're only going over this for your pleasure. I don't even right. care about the stats. I mean, I what care about the stats. Like? I want to see them. I want to get familiar with them. And then I want to see how they look like and what they match up with when we go to this next portion of him, you know, actually playing the game, uh, which let's jump into. Oh, hey, is it time for the read? Yeah, we're up. Uh, all right, guys. Well, before we finish with this rookie profile, we got to tell you. You need to be shaving your balls, right? Shave your nether regions, ladies, you too. Guys and gals, all any gender, you got to be taking care of yourself. You got to be grooming. You got to be manscaping, which is why we're extremely excited to bring you this new partnership with manscaped.com. 100%. Let me find the graphic. Here we go. Code word, DFFD, 20% off. Uh, let's see here. Manscaped, the best... In men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. 
They offer precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. They just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. 4.0, you heard that right. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free shipping. Man, I love free shipping. Use the code word the FFD manscaped.com. Again, that's the FFD cutting edge ceramic blade was designed to reduce accidents, reduce nicks and ingrown hairs. Not to mention it's waterproof. If you shave, if who's cutting wet grass, not me, but I, if that's your jam, get it in the shower. It's got an LED light. If you want to drink and scape, it's you know. beautiful. <laughs> If you just treat yourself, you know, you can't be using the treat same. Yo, self. You can't use the same razor for your balls that you use on your face. Well, it's just, that's gross. Can't so, be doing that. Need to get yourself manscaped. Go over to manscaped.com. Use the code word the FFD for your pleasure. Let's get back to the show. Right off the bat, we just did Brees Hall. I think there's a pretty stark contrast between Brees and Spiller. When you get into Spiller here, he leaves a crime scene behind him, whereas Brees was a bit more elegant. And that's not a slight on Brees by any means. Uh, right. But- uh, no, I, I think saying Brees is elegant is a compliment. I also don't think saying that Isaiah Spiller left a crime scene behind that, that to me is a compliment as well. It's that spot on. For sure. Busting dudes up. With with Spiller, I think you get a much more physical, aggressive play style, and he was having his way with the SEC. Uh, so, you know, obviously one guy's playing in the Big 12 in Brees and one guy's playing in the SEC. These are, you know, there is no debate that this is the best conference with getting most of the best athletes. Not saying there isn't great athletes in all the other conferences, uh, but they're pretty they're pretty stout in the SEC, in the SEC mean, and, and, and um, Spiller managed to continuously be – very, very strong at Texas A and M. With the line play, I think there was probably a little bit better run blocking in 2020, 2021. I believe you had two f- true freshmen starting in that line, so it seemed to get a little bit better as the season went on in 2021. Where 2020 seemed like it was a little bit more consistent blocking wise. Uh, so, to, to his credit, in 2021. Uh, I think Spiller was was having to do a little bit more, especially early in the season. And I do believe they have like a tackle that's graded pretty high. Maybe they're calling like one of the most athletic tackles in this draft could go pretty high in the first round. So. Yeah, uh, but I, I, it's kind of a, a slasher style to him with just these ferocious jump cuts, um, and then kind of shows his patience by using these little kind of hop crow choppy steps and then behind the line of scrimmage to help him wait and create the lane and set up his blocks. I think the feet are, are that of a dancer, which are my colleague uh, Jay Wayne would know a lot about. The footwork is proper. For those who aren't OGs of the show, I did used to dance as a little kid. My mom and grandmother put me in dance lessons, uh, which a dance. helps with footwork. And, and footwork is this man's name in the game like he he has some outstanding footwork mm-hmm. and it's and it's violent the cuts and the the way he just hammers the ground with these cuts in his feet it reminds me a little bit of Josh Jacobs you know which I yeah. don't want anyone to take that as a negative a lot of people hate on Josh Jacobs my man has great footwork and that's got him a long way in the NFL and he's a valuable piece on your dynasty team and I think I think Spiller has that violent ferocious footwork cut ability that that allows him to change directions quickly you know just seems like a lot of a lot of uh, break tenacity in in most parts of spiller's game uh, so again we get to the contact 100. balance here um it's it's as if this man has training wheels on he's pretty tough to tip over like this is another I, we keep said the the footwork's maybe the best part but the contact balance is is right there you see a lot of he, it's hard it's hard to bring this man down it's hard yeah. to bring him down and he's not he's not afraid of contact and it's not going to throw him off course. No, and, and then, you know, you pair that up with having some good bursty movements where he can go from kind of plodding along, and I'm not saying plodding as a negative that he's a plotter or anything. He can go from plottering along to a very powerful burst in an instant. Right. Um, I think like much like Brees, he's got good short area burst. You know, he can, he can accelerate pretty fast and that's, yeah. that's what 
can can maybe account for not having super long speed, which I think is what we're about to get into. But but having that burst to get to your top speed quicker is more important to me than the top end speed. Yeah, for sure. Um, and 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 I think it's probably a little bit better than Brees's. I think the lateral quickness and speed to help him get to the edge is there. The burst think, is quick is better I, than Brees. I, I think? think so. And, and I think this like getting an edge, he probably does a little better than than Brees. But Brees lightning's faster. You think? Uh, Top end speed's yeah, got to be faster. I don't know. I, I don't. I'm, I'm pegging Brees is faster than Spiller. I don't. I, I don't think the top end speed is quite there with with Spiller, but I mean, it's still pretty good. It's right. not. But I mean, how many guys have uh, once I get like how many guys have Jonathan Taylor speed in in the NFL in total? Not very many. Like just in general, there's just not that many it's of like those GT, guys. T Saquon. That, maybe. Hey, Christian. if you if you get free, you're probably scoring. There isn't that many guys. It's not to say that Spiller can't get free and score there's plenty of uh, examples of that there's also examples of him getting caught just like Brees right um, but he so, does have a ton of long runs I mean yeah. 85 yards 67 60 57 52 52 48 46 44 like a bunch of long runs because right. he does have that burst to, to to separate initially now you might catch him these DBs are catching him from behind but then you still have to tackle him right you right. still have to tackle him he's got a mean stiff arm he, he will he will break your tackle like you get tackled trying to tackle him <laughs> for sure I don't really love the way that he carries it sometimes. Seems a little bit loosey-goosey. Um, there, there were a couple of games. I don't know if they were sequential games, but I watched in a row where he didn't lose the fumble, but he got it poked out a decent amount of times. Right, yeah. Um, I, don't, I think he was only credited with six fumbles lost, but he definitely fumbled it more than that. Because right. he, he holds it away from his body. And these boys are changing the ball in their hands, which I, haven't, I don't know that I've seen too much. I don't know yeah. that they even like him doing that in college. but He does it. Yeah. Um, they do it in the NFL all the time. But, they practice that, but in college, it's rare to see. And you see him changing the, you but know, I, but I did on the outside. I did but, see him getting it poked out a little bit there, and, sure. and got lucky a couple of times with some sideline bounces um, and, and, and just his some own recoveries. recoveries right. Other teams, yeah. Um, so you know, don't like that. Got to clean that up a little bit. But again, I think there's I think there's a solid wide receiver here in in. Uh, Isaiah Spiller. Oh, for sure. I think he had a couple routes. The hand seemed pretty strong. Um, and, yeah. I, and again, I think he was really underused in this category. There was a handful of sl- uh, snaps out of the slot and out wide. He had 23 snaps in the slot, 36 out wide, 183 pass blocking snaps, which I thought was pretty relevant to just to know that they were asking him to pass, pro, which we'll get to pass pro here in a second. But, you know, didn't, didn't see a ton of targets out of those out wide and in the slot formations, um, but did run a ton of routes out of the backfield. I saw some whip route action in there. Uh, he runs that little Texas route, option route to a T. Um, looked kind of Alvin Kamara-y like with it, and I thought the hands got better. I thought early on in his career he was doing a lot of body catching. As he get older, it seemed to stick in there. Yeah. Um, and, and you mentioned earlier he probably underutilized. I think you could probably do more with him in the passing game, which is what has a lot of people excited about Brees Hall. Right. Or, I- excuse me, Isaiah Spiller. I think I think there's I think again that's a, that, that's something that that should be built upon and should be celebrated a little bit more. I, I think there's for sure uh, some three down capability here. The pass pro just did seem okay to me. Didn't seem like anything outstanding. Which with a guy of this uh, physical nature and tenacity and with a lot of the ways that he moves around the field and plays, uh, would like to see a little bit better at that. But that is is certainly something you can improve on. And then, like I mentioned, they did bring in a chain here at the end of of. Uh, Spiller's career, and you did see some some uh, lead blocking from Spiller, right? Uh, it's like when they were block. using both fullback, fullback, you know, when they were using both those guys on the field at the same time. Um, so definitely has the ability to, and and you know, didn't always meet the blocker, let him come to him and stuff, and got into trouble sometimes, but made some nice blocks, and they were asking a lot of him, which you you don't see that a ton. One hundred eighty three pass blocking snaps. That's right. It's a lot. So again, three down capability. I think a hundred percent. I think the pass game work is there. The being being an engine for a team. Uh, we like to talk about that with running backs and the way they can be used. I think he's that guy. He can start you off and set a tone. And if you keep feeding him, he's going to continue to get better as the game goes on. Um, you know, I think he does a few things better than Brees for me, and definitely has some different traits as we've kind of talked about here, but probably not quite enough to unseat Brees for me. Uh, but again, you know, the NFL could it only takes one team, and 
you know, Spiller could end up being the first running back off the board. Which doesn't mean dick to me. I no. Mean, Rashad Penny was the first running back off the board. So they took players Clyde before Edwards, Jonathan before Taylor. Jonathan right, Taylor. Right. Um, so, and Swift, I believe. You know, so that could certainly go. But, you know, that that can also get it. You know, oh, this guy was first. And that can also attach public opinion of draft stock in your rookie drafts and, and can drive those things in different ways so those are all things to be cognizant of uh when you're going in to draft somebody and and try to feeling out the public opinion of of you know if you're if you're a big spiller guy that if if it p- pans out that way where the nfl shows that hey maybe we like one team likes them a little bit more than the rest i haven't seems like Brees and big draft is maybe ahead of of big draft coverage is ahead of spiller in in most people's uh mocks but um, it only takes one and, and again, could be a, could be a higher pick. So, uh, but for me, probably staying behind Brees. I think so, but, but still up, up high for me in the rookie draft. Cause he's a running back. I think I'm going to like him over a lot of these wide receivers. And he's just, he's just a, he's just a really good all around running back, you know, just efficient with his movement and, and yeah. he has that sudden burst and he, and he picks his way through traffic and he sets up his blockers great both behind the line of scrimmage and in the second level and he has some patience and, and can throw you off guard and throw you off get you off balance and then use that short area quickness to get around you or just run fucking through you right and just really like everything about this game the vision seems really good and and you got the receiving chops to rest on and potentially some draft capital if he performs well at the combine here he's just gonna elevate through the roof and i can't I don't, know anything until then don't right we, well, we don't we don't really know anything i don't even know why we're doing this video <laughs> before the combine how could either. you know anything before the combine but uh, it, we're trying to put the anal and analytics here it seems like you kind of have three uh three different styles for your pleasure here with these mostly regarded as the top top three running backs talking about walker walker Brees. Brees, you kind of have three Brees different Lightning. stylistic uh players here to, to to all fit kind of whatever you might like and and i could see i'm not gonna argue with you if you want to put spiller ahead because you like the way he plays um not a ton of mileage on him but maybe a little bit more physical so maybe maybe could see a little bit less shelf life to the maybe elegance of Brees. but i mean that's neither here nor there who the hell knows like adrian right. peterson was still playing right um had a pretty high level even the last couple times he stepped on the field and being as old as he was with all the knee injuries and still being you know i'm not saying he's adrian peterson by any means i'm just saying somebody who played with physicality right yeah a lot of people talk trash about this class in general i don't agree with it there isn't a top end high-end stud like jamar chase or jonathan taylor that you just know they're going to be a first round startup pick before you know it could one of these guys be a first round startup pick I think so. I think if they play well in their rookie year and, and show show life and, and, and play well, that they could get the right up opportunity. That tie. Yeah. Right. Um, maybe not. Maybe they're just a third, fourth round startup pick. And that's a fantastic or maybe asset second and third round on your team. Right. You need you need more than just the guy you picked in the first you round. You need David Montgomery. David right. Montgomery helped us win a championship this year. Josh Jacobs helped us win a championship this year. Those right. aren't first round picks. And nobody wants to take them in the third or fourth round, but we gobbled them up and we fucking score points with them. And right. We win. That's the how name of the game, game. Is, is scoring points, cashing in on the value. If somebody's going to push these running backs down because they want the wide receivers in this class isn't good, I, I, I think I think I'm, Give me I'm turning backs, more baby. and more to being like, all right, yeah, um, I'm okay. At definitely putting these two running backs uh, probably ahead of most of those wide receivers right now. And you know, we're about to hit this third running back in here and, and tune in to see if we're uh, if we're going to slide him up there as well. So, all right. Well, you got anything else? I think that's it. Appreciate you guys joining us. If you're listening on the podcast, go over to iTunes, go over to Spotify, hit the five stars. That's all you got to do. Hit the five stars. Uh, We'd really appreciate that. It helps us out, helps uh, get our algorithms up on those. And if you're watching on YouTube, please let me get that subby, scribey, leave a comment, (laughs) let us know who you want to see next. I think we're going to hit some Walker pretty soon. Uh, We'll drop that in the coming days. And, uh, you know, just can't thank you guys enough for joining us. Tell your friends. I know it's hard. I know you don't want to tell your friends about us, but but do it, you know? (laughs) Because they're not going to listen. You're going to do what you want to do anyway. This is just occupying the airwaves. So appreciate y'all. We'll see you next time. Peace.